golden retriever puppy with rose with markers and uh, I just wanted to talk to you about some of the options you have with markers but first remember friends if you like this video um, please like it uh, subscribe and tell your friends about it ask them to subscribe ask them to like it too that helps me a lot and uh, if you do that and let me know during class, that's that's what you got to do is let me know. Um, and then I'll mail you one of these Art Tub fridge magnets and uh, I'll send you a personal thank you note as well. So thanks so much for your support, friends. It makes a huge difference. And uh, just please remember to do that. All right, guys. So today for the media demonstration video, what we're going to be doing is using markers to color in this really cute puppy. So. If you saw the art lesson, um, you know that there's a lot of options for, you know, finishing this drawing. You can always use whatever supplies you have at home. But if you're seeing this for the first time and haven't taken an art lesson yet, um, just know that, for example, you see how this one's just a puppy on a chair. But in this example, I put some balloons on the chair, right? And that's no problem. That's a fun way to add a detail. And in this example, uh, I added some grass and some gifts in the background and a dog bone instead uh, right here on the chair. So that's another fun option. And then in this option, this is really interesting. It's, it's in marker, so that's nice to see as well. But notice that this one is indoors. So it's the same lesson, it's just indoors. This art lesson was originally made for a birthday party, and so that's why this puppy looks kind of like he's at a party. Um, you can do anything you like. Uh, it doesn't have to be a party. It could be like just a regular day. Um, anyway, so friends, about the markers, okay? Everybody knows it pays to have lots and lots of variety, right? So as you can see, I got tons of markers here and a lot of colors to choose from. That's good. But also, this is a great example of why multicultural or colors of the world, markers, colored pencils, crayons, whatever you can find in multicultural colors, they're super helpful. They're great for skin tone and hair, but they're also great for art lessons that involve dogs that are different shades of gold and tan. So I'm going to pick some of these out. And uh, just to show you what I mean, like, for example, that's a really nice color right there. And I want sort of a lighter color, but not that light. So I'm going to look through here. Yep, this one's a nice sort of a medium tan color. And uh, I'm just going to make sure that I have more than one of those in case it runs out of ink. And I'm going to also get this one, which is kind of a slightly darker brown. You see how I'm get, creating some shades here for myself. So that's going to help me a lot when the time comes. I want one more. Let's see if this is the one I want. Ah. Uh, you know, I think it is. I'm glad I tested that. That's why we test our colors. So this marker is like a really nice color. So I have my colors here lined up for my dog. I know that already. And guys, it's really helpful. I know, like, for example, if you have a giant tub of markers like this, <clears throat> pick out the ones you're going to use. So it's very helpful. You're going to help yourself a lot. So I am going to do that in time lapse. I've got my testing paper here. I'm going to make sure I have the colors I want. I'm also going to add a little bit of detail here with a Sharpie. Um, that's another thing I wanted to mention, guys. If you add details to your drawing, always do it with a Sharpie or a black pencil. You don't want to do it with, for example, one of these. So if you wanted to draw a butterfly or something, don't just draw it with a marker. Draw it with a Sharpie first. You want everything to have that bold, sharp line. All right, guys, I'm going to go into time lapse and I'm going to pick out my colors. And then I think I'm just going to keep on going. I don't think you need to hear me talk about the colors I choose. You'll be able to see that. And then I'll come back for a conclusion. All right, friends, here we go. So as you can see, I have finished coloring my drawing and I did my best. A uh, couple of ways you can use markers that help you. Number one, pick out your colors, have a plan, right? Number two, though, I want to point out to you, there's a couple of things that really make a difference. If you color in one direction, right? Meaning like, do you see how in the sky I tried my best to go all vertical up and down? Um, 
but also sometimes in the direction of like whatever it is. So like the chair, like this is a long thing. So I did long lines and this is going across the back. And then even here, I made it look like it's kind of coming out sort of a, a little bit 3D. Uh, I used different kinds of lines when I colored in my dog to kind of show sort of a shaggy furry look to him. And it, I tried to do that again in the grass because the grass and the fur have a similar sort of texture. Um, I used different colors of pink and red and even like a purplish pink. But one thing that's really important, it helps a lot, is when you use a gray and you use gray on things that are white. So like clouds, this fence, this, t uh, this baseball, things like that. Um, as you can see, I made this dog in a yard with a bowl of water and a tennis, or not a tennis ball, uh, a baseball. Uh, as you can see, you can make this any way you want to. This is a great example of another variation. Before we go, I just want to talk quickly about how to color sometimes with markers. Some kids pick up a marker and they color the entire thing with these little tiny skinny lines. And so that's going to take you forever. What I want you to do is look where I've got my hand on it. Sometimes we hold it like this, like a pencil, right? And then we, we get those teeny tiny lines. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes you have a tiny little place to color. But try this. Put your fingers. See where I'm holding it? See how I've got my fingers on the back? And tilt the marker. And just try it. Try it on free draw paper. Don't try it for the first time on your project, guys. It's a really great thing to do. It helps you say, well, that marker has lots of ink. That's another good reason to do it. But it's also a great way to just sort of show yourself that you can do that. Um, also, definitely try out some different types of techniques. Like this is like a different, you know, I'm holding it a little closer to the front. but still kind of in the middle. And I'm going to work on creating sort of that more shaggy texture. And I'm doing that by overlapping. You see how I'm overlapping those colors? And I'm not trying to make it exactly the same. And that way it starts to look kind of cool. I don't know if you noticed, but this is a golden retriever. And one way that you can make a golden retriever golden is once you have these sort of neutral colors, you can go over the whole thing with a yellow. And that gives it a really bright, vibrant sort of golden tone to it. Well, guys, I think we're done for today. I can't wait to see your drawings. Uh, please send me pictures. Email them to me. Let me see how you're doing. Um, until then, guys, I look forward to drawing with you next week. And hopefully, anytime you want to draw with me, I'll be here for you. Thanks, guys. See you next time.